Welcome back to These Guys Again, or TGA, your weekly podcast on film and everything to do with film. I say weekly, but it's, again, <laughs> subjective. Uh, let's just go straight into the news, Mark. We could, we could say bi-weekly, because that means it could be twice a week or every two, every two weeks. weeks. Yes, I like this. It's vague. And what we need is vague. <laughs> <laughs> the world needs more vague. <laughs> All right, but I am Craig. There's our news head, Mark. Hello. And on the audio mixing decks... Mr. Vague. Mr. Big, Irvin. <laughs> All right, but let's go straight into the news. Mark, what have you got for us? Disney has reported that four weeks of... It's been described as reshoots, but um, additional shooting has been taken on for Rogue One. Lots of rumours flying around as to why, ranging from you know the overall tone of the film to additional scenes for other characters or expanding on characters, possibly introducing the new Han Solo now he's been cast... Um, to certain sections being too brutal, like particularly apparently Darth Vader's scenes are very brutal, Mm -hmm. even though none of this is confirmed. But Darth Vader's so light and fluffy. (laughs) It's important, you know, to take all this with a grain of salt because a lot of people saying it reflects... No one did that for Suicide Squad! ...saying it reflects badly on... uh, Yeah, but the only thing that came out from that was that it needed more humour. But, yeah, again, it means nothing because nothing Mm. was confirmed. Mm -hmm. Um... But a lot of people are taking this reflecting badly on Gareth Edwards' first cut of the film. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is Disney we're talking about. Uh, I was going to say the other way. I thought people would be more angry at Disney trying to censor Gareth Edwards. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. come out a lot. Yeah. Well, that's come yeah. out a lot. But, um, you know, from the trailer, it's a lot. It's, you know, it's got a rather dark tone. It's essentially a war film. Um, yeah. And that's what. But stars aren't about wars. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's kind of what was was wanted mm-hmm. um but then also there's more saying that you know the film is supposed to finish something like 10 minutes yeah, before yeah, the start of episode yeah. four mm-hmm. so you know the tones by the end have to match because you can't come out of this because it's supposed to fit into the timeline yeah yeah fairly yeah. significantly it can't be this great trench sort of film yeah and you can't just come go out of this straight really, into this adventure this dark horrific war film and then go straight in, I mean, even though the opening of Episode four is quite bleak. Mm-hmm. It's still got an overall. It's got a tone to it yeah, that is yeah, not which, like that. Yeah, which may be may be lacking from Gareth's first cut. Yeah, but I'm not sh- not too sure because like with the start of four, you know, it is yeah, it's all hope is lost. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and just everyone's getting cut down on the twenty four, so you could have that sort of tone. Exactly. So, uh, like, again, that's why everyone's wanting from these standalone films is mm, something, something different. different. Yeah, but at the same so. time, it, families have to enjoy it to a degree. I understand that everyone is saying, "Oh, we want this great Star Wars film." Like, there never really was. Like, I understand people saying, "Oh, Empire is this dark film," but it still manages to tread a line. Mm. And yeah, it's, but and Star Wars is going to go on forever. Mm-hmm. It'd be nice having some. I understand it's got to be different, but at the same time, this is a you know, it's their Christmas Star Wars film. Mm-hmm. And well, they're, they're hopefully all Christmas Star Wars films. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say, I hope it is, the, but you know what I mean? As in, they've got to be able, it's got to still have that tone that they can watch Rebels. Would, as in, <laughs> you know, different age groups could watch it and maybe take away different aspects of it instead mm. of it being, okay, this is your Deadpool. Okay. <laughs> this is your, you know, this is your family friendly one. They, you know, I don't think it should be too difficult. You can still have things be quite bleak, but still have it that, you know, maybe that stuff goes, is not, you know, something that a child would pick up on the same. Yeah. So I, I just think it's about kind of striking a balance. And if they think that more reshoots are going to be required for that. Yeah. It could mean anything. I mean, like films of this scale always have reshoots Mm -hmm. or additional, I keep calling it reshoots. It's additional shooting shooting. because nothing is specified. Mm -hmm. Additional shooting mixed into the team stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mixed into the timeline, mixed into the budget. The actors are aware that they could be called back for doing additional yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what Ayer said about like the Suicide Squad. Yeah. It's like, you know, they all really liked it and they're getting a lot more action stuff yeah. done. I mean, it's so. not it's not uncommon in films like this. It's only being reported because it's Star Wars and it's yeah, Disney. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's a lot, there is a lot riding on this because it's the first one that isn't, you know, ep- episode seven was very, it was Four. good. It was good, but it was very straight and narrow. Mm-hmm. Like it was the Star Wars that people remembered. Yeah. And that was the point of it. Mm-hmm. But as I said, you know, this is going to go on forever or at yeah. infinitum. <laughs> Breaking it would be yours, nice to have something different. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm not worried. I trust Gareth. I mean, Gareth the first trailer was great. 
Yeah. yeah. And like, this is me and I have spoken about this before that it's the same kind of thing with the same. Well, it's also within Disney's wheelhouse, but uh, with Marvel films and the Star Wars films alike, a lot of things are projects are being announced so far in advance mm-hmm. that we are becoming savvy to the changes because the whole process is so transparent now. Yeah. When yeah. film, it's the modern, the modern age of filmmaking, everything is tweeted. Everything yeah, is exactly Instagram. A film could be five years off and then they say, Oh, well, we're rescheduling it. And that would usually happen, but it'd be, you know, we would not be in the loop of that. Mm-hmm. We would not yeah. be the common public would not be aware of that. But now the way things are, we are. So it's, mm. it's, and, but unfortunately it's a situation where people go mental about it, even though it's probably happened a million times with their films before it. Exactly. Just not being aware. Exactly. It's just, it's the, the, how big this film is. It's just yeah. attractive. It's like similar, pro- similar to yeah. Suicide Squad coming out from, you know, what Batman vs Superman mm. was. Yeah. All eyes are on DC. What are they going to do about this? Mm-hmm. And then something that's probably very standard for Suicide Squad, probably that's on those planned from the start suddenly becomes a big deal because yeah. oh Batman vs Superman was terrible it was so dark blah 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 maybe we should make Suicide Squad funnier one person yeah. says that on Twitter and then everyone starts saying it yeah it's just the yeah. way taking his it's the way social media works mm-hmm. and modern journalism yeah exactly <laughs> journalism, journalism. <laughs> Uh, for anyone who didn't see that, because Radio I don't know how you miss it, <laughs> there was quotation marks raised. Radio there. quotations. Brie Larson is apparently in early talks to play Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Great this choice. Is, this is you the. Think? She's yeah, a great, she's a great, a great yeah. actress. I don't necessarily see her as Danvers, but hmm. then again. This is the Marvel casting thing, though, all yeah. over again a lot of the it's time. It's always great. We always get. It's always someone we're surprised, but when we think about it, we're like, oh, that could work. Yeah. But as well as that, this is the. This is the first time I've heard about in someone being in talks rather than someone rumored that they have approached, and it's just you know. Mm. Been well, the rumors that I heard were that, um, well, like there's rumors ages ago that she's already already been cast and things yeah, are being filmed for sort of Black Panther or Doctor Strange or yeah. Mm-hmm. But so I'm trying to remember who's all in pl- preliminaries. So it was like Emily, uh, Emily Blunt, Emily Blunt, Blunt a long time ago. That cast be, for everything. That would be her third yeah. Marvel role she was approached for. Um, if she was even approached. If she was, yeah. There was talks, well, earrings of maybe Rhonda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was that was well, that. I, 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 I think that was a wild joke. card. Yeah, I think that was a Twitter yeah. joke. Uh, there yeah. was also Marjorie Game of Thrones. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, Natalie Dormer. Dormer. Natalie Dormer yeah. wasn't. It was another one rumored, and then mm. the but she's already in Captain her. America. So yeah. that's the it. woman from Vikings who was recently cast in something Ooh, else. That's right. Yeah, she was recently cast in another film. Yeah. Um, so I think that's going to be her. Essentially, maybe. isn't she in? No, she's not in Ragnarok. I think she's in something. She could be in Ragnarok. I think that's what it was. That's the thing. I remember they announced this person. And I was like, okay, Ragnarok. well, maybe I'll, that'll take her off the table for that. Mm-hmm. But um, no, this is it's interesting, especially someone who's got a proven caliber with such amazing yeah. Oscar nominated films yeah. as Jump Street she's, she's a- and um, <laughs> and obviously Scott Pilgrim versus the World, of course. Two of my two of my favorite films as well. So I yeah, totally favorites. on board. There's another film she was in, but I can't remember what it was. Space. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal is apparently. Why are you saying it like that? Board what? Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh yeah, Gyllenhaal. Oh, Jake Gyllen Gyllenhaalen. There we go. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaalen is uh, apparently to star in an adaption of Tom Clancy's The Division. And according to Ubisoft, uh, you know, like all great films, you start with the actor and make the film around them. So mm-hmm. there's nothing else to go on. Like, obviously, the story is there from the game, but there's nothing more to go on. That's on how I write game. any story. I come up with the title first, and then I build the whole story around the title. That's <laughs> how you subtraction. do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's either going to be about math or it's going to be about society in some sort of new political way. <laughs> this the, guy. The Sicario sequel has now got a name and a director. Sicario 2. <laughs> Soldado. Uh, will be directed by Stefano Salima. Have you looked up to see what it means? No. I, 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 like, Sicario is just a, like a common term in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Wasn't um, it, though, like Mexican for Hitman or something? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually, I mean, this, that was actually not, the tagline for yeah, the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not <laughs> actually Hitman, it's something else. Unless you show yeah. us that. Somebody else Google it. Well, but dude, that was the tagline for the film. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Hey, Sicario, it means Hitman. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, be directed by Stefano Salima. Mm-hmm. There's an Italian director who's worked on a number of Italian TV shows and movies, including a crime and corruption thriller, Subura, which hasn't come over to the UK yet, but apparently is quite something. Yeah. And, you know, matches the sort of tone it's, that they're yeah, going yeah, for. Yeah, really yes, yes. cool. um, It will focus more on Del Toro and Josh Brolin, as Emily Blunt is not returning for the sequel. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, to be honest, her arc, I essentially thought was done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so that's interesting. Yeah, so it's a good film. I mean, like it's definitely made me want to see this Subota whenever it shows up. So. You think it'll be mm. called Sicario, a, like a, a Sicario film or something like that? Because, or do you think it doesn't need it? I don't think it needs it. It's not that mm. kind of. It's not that kind of franchise. I yeah, suppose. and also if they work as like individual elements, that'd you be know, quite good. Like stun, then this, then yeah. that. Because to be honest, is it wasn't a film that it was though it was successful. It's not one that is hugely in the public eye. Yeah, so it'd be good if it just worked independently as Mm -hmm. stories. Yeah, because I do think that when some of these films, like look at the Pirates of the Caribbean films, they would have worked so much better if they were just independent swashbuckling stories. Mm. So I think yeah, I like the idea of it being independent parts. Apparently, Sadaldo is a Latin American soldier. Hmm. Okay, so it was like Hitman Soldier. The next one will be Taylor. Then maybe yeah. Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> They'll call it Tinkerer to avoid copyright issues. <laughs> Talking about Emily Blunt, she has been confirmed as Mary Poppins in sequel to the classic film. The gritty sequel to the film. I don't know. XB Ella Deuce. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that's going to go, but interesting casting. Yeah. I hope they make it dark and gritty. It'll be badass. <laughs> like everything I love, like what they do with Star Wars. Just make it dark and gritty. Like the 90s. Everything in the 90s. <laughs> Colin Firth is set to star in a Russian submarine disaster film about the, the Russian submarine Kursk, um, which tells the story of a torpedo explosion aboard the Pride of the Russian Navy, which uh, ended up with the death of all 118 crew. So it's... That is bleak. It's going to be dark, but... That is bleak. Colin Firth is an interesting choice. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I've just seen Kingsman and... Colin Firth so great. And I haven't yeah. seen Kingsman yet, but yeah. I keep hearing it's really good. And, it's very different from the stuff he's been in as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's, and just he's, him kicking ass. Is like, I, just, I hope he's in the sequel just from what it's been yeah, going on. It was yeah. so good. Um, ben Affleck's Batman film apparently will be an original story, independent from the comics, but you know, still borrowing from significant stories. <laughs> I just love it. It's like, <laughs> the Batman, still not over my dead parents. <laughs> I just, I just bet you it will be, insp- it will be Undead just like ev- parents. <laughs> it'll be every, it'll be like every other comic book film. But now they're just saying we're not paying attention to any particular story, so you can't criticize us. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's, t- it's just like don't tell them what story we're basing it on, otherwise they'll just say it's not as good. Oh, they make it gangster modern and it's Batman under the red hoodie. Yeah, it could be. Oh, Boom. God. Yeah, it'll be something like that. Moving on, John Mark Boyega has been cast as the lead in the Pacific Rim sequel, and he'll be playing uh, Idris Elba. El- blah, 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 blah. Elba. He'll be playing Idris Elba's character, Stacker Pentecost's son. Yes. So, did you guys love Pacific Rim? Oh God, yes. I loved Pacific Rim. Why wouldn't I love? Pacific someone, Rim? someone said to me, "Why didn't you know at the end where he pulls out the sword?" Yes. And it's like, why well, didn't you use that sword earlier in the film? And I was like, because the awesome music wasn't playing at that point. And that's you, all you need to know in this film. You need the reveal. I know. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. And you don't care because it's the gigantic robots exactly. fighting the gigantic monsters. Exactly. Only at nighttime. Only at nighttime because then the special effects look better. That's when the <laughs> monsters come. They mostly come at night. Mostly. Mostly. <laughs> mostly. But then like, the best sequence in that is the little girl Tokyo sequence. is like, Phew. It's such so a good when the monster comes in the daytime. Yes, ha, mostly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. When have they given? Have we got a solid date yet? Because this one's moved around about three times. Yeah, no, yeah. it keeps getting because um, Universal is it? They're, they're trying to build it's legendary, uh, isn't it? Is it uh, legendary are doing the think it's monster film house. Yeah, the, the ones, yeah, that's yeah. They're, yeah. they're trying to build Skull a, Island. Yes, yeah. yeah. and there's an, uh, Godzilla, Godzilla, and there's another one. That's in I'm development. not sure if these ones are all tied together because I think that one's sort of slightly no, different because it's tied with Warner. Warner want to do Godzilla and Pac Rim. Yeah, I'm getting confused. I'm getting confused as well. I can't remember. Also, I think Legendary, they're doing their own thing with um, like the Skull Island, yeah. uh, Frank- Mummy, Frankenstein, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jekyll mm-hmm. and Hyde. Uh, Dracula Untold I think that's all there do you, did you guys think. remember the the talks that Guillermo said this was years ago uh, yeah. after the success of this obviously this uh, did not do well in I know it didn't do the US it, market but, but did amazingly well in Asia yeah. like worldwide shock and um, but obviously they were, it's a failure because this is the one we care about oh wait no it's amazing um, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna backtrack uh, uh, why do we always make these statements three days into release um, and the 
Guillermo, when they said the sequel will be coming, he gave the time frame for that. But he also said there would be an anime series before. Yeah, and also he was on board mm. to direct as well at that point. He was going to yeah. be doing it, but you know, he since moved on to other things. And yeah, it's, but and then folk were just like quietly shouting up it's an open life in canon still for Neo Genesis <laughs> quiet you <laughs> is it but the thing Guillermo I feel is like Steven Spielberg now where it feels, oh, he's he can't so commit met, to a yeah. role yeah, no, he, yeah. Yeah, he's, um, he, he's, he's like, like a, Justice League Dark Pack Crim 2 something something Crimson Peak out of nowhere the, the two <laughs> the two computer games that he was both oh, signed on yeah, to do PT uh, and, PT. insane yeah. The first one, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, he's like a child with a load of toys. He just doesn't know which one to play with. Oh, this one, this one, this one, this one. And then he falls asleep on the spot. <laughs> like, oh, look at him! He tuckered himself out. Sounds about right. Got so excited. Michael B. Jordan has confirmed. Not the basketball player. You put the initial in there. I, I just want to put, confirm that I for people. The, yeah, I know, but yeah. the other famous actor from Space Jam. People I did put the this. initial in though. I know. I'm just confirming okay. for people. Michael B. Yeah. Jordan. Yeah, uh, is confirmed for. A role in Black Panther. Don't know what, but people were thinking a villain. It's like, oh, yeah, that'd be pretty good. But mm. reuniting with a uh, Coogler, so from Creed, from Creed, ah, the Rocky legacy, which has now been underscored on <laughs> shops. <laughs> yeah, so people know that it's a Rocky film. It's also yeah. a great film, and it's not called Rocky Seven, the Son of Creed, <laughs> <laughs> Adrian's Revenge. <laughs> 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 Oh, she's dead now. It'd be a zombie film. I know it would be. Yeah, Twist. Or, uh, but he, uh, the he restaurant beats. comes alive. Oh crap! <laughs> he beats her with boxing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the way, the only way it's great, though, he doesn't coming. scream like Adrian. He screams at Pluto. Adrian, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's finally gone mental. Um, and finally, Mel Gibson and longtime collaborator screenwriter Randall Wallace are working on a sequel to Passion of the Christ, focusing oh. on the resurrection. Of Christ. I wonder if it'll be true to the think, source material. Is that the same <laughs> Randall Wallace who did Man in the Iron Mask? And I'm hoping that guy's Randall Wallace. I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be a recut to the original where there's an after credit scene where you see a boulder just shake in front of a cave? And then from there, we'll be like, oh man, where's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so original. And then sudden cut. <laughs> Much like Game of Thrones, I read the books. Uh, <laughs> so I'm so far ahead. <laughs> Oh man, That's yeah, like, it's interesting. <laughs> Mel Gibson's not really been in the spotlight much recently. Yeah, yeah. So I'm telling you now, those are the tamer of my jokes that I already had loaded up. <laughs> so give us some untamed ones. Uh, I do have an idea of what the logo will be, and it will be like Passion of the Christ, and then it appears, it fades in, and then they do a line, and then another line, and then they make a cross, and it's a double cross. And I think that could be Oh, great. and then he gets double-crossed in the movie. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> but they already did that in the first one. And, <laughs> and the Passion of the Christ 2 already exists. Crucify this and family. Yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Chris Tucker. <laughs> they could Jim, go Jim, 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 And if Henry Cavill doesn't sign on, it'll be about his son. Because that's what they always do in these. Oh, they could get Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> 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 the Jesus le- the Jesus legacy <laughs> oh man they could do so much I mean we're practically like the we're doing what the writing room should be doing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but will they go for the casual the hardcore audience with this I'm still confused yeah. where your casting is Henry Cavill going to be the father of Michael B. Jordan yeah of course okay it brings questions but it doesn't matter because <laughs> yeah. God's involved I am. Um, <laughs> I am your father what <laughs> I'm very confused by this whole situation. Nah, there's a lot they can do. I'm yeah. looking forward to see the scope of this film. <laughs> could be, could be good. I, know. I wonder how it'll stack up to Gods of Egypt. I, I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't even. Oh yeah. Also, to continue on uh, in that seamless cut, uh, the uh, another news item uh, is Westworld. It's something that has been in and out of film and TV news so much because of it's been development hell for, I think it must be two years now from when it was initially, well, from when we started hearing issues with it, mm. because this is obviously it's the, it t- it's, was it Crichton that wrote Jurassic Park? Yeah. yeah. This was, it's ba- Westworld oh, yeah. is based right. on his, um, other book by the same name where it is essentially the same idea as Jurassic Park, but with robot Robots. Westerners. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you really like theme parks. <laughs> <laughs> what theme park can I do next? Um, and 
it f- seems to finally be moving ahead and new s- shots of current because there's been so many issues of this in terms of rewrites yeah uh, general production issues with, yeah general uh, general production issues with the studio actors stepping out and recasting mm, roles yeah. it's been all over the place but it finally looks like it could be coming through because visually it looks great it looks it looks like a film level but this is what we expect from HBO, HBO yeah um, it is the yeah, whole box office yeah. yeah so I'm I'm really glad that there's actually stuff moving forward with that I'm just hoping that the story actually stacks up because um, the last HBO thing I got quite excited for was The Leftovers and I actually really got into that I haven't finished that yet but the second series but yeah. um, this is the first one in a while I've actually been really interested from them yeah, it's such a funny leftovers thing. It's like you gotta watch, you gotta watch, you gotta watch it, and it's like I'm gonna go straight through it, and it's like go watch season two, season two, and you're like, I'll get around to it. <laughs> yeah, because I convince you to watch season one, and then yeah. you watch season one and two, and then try, and you're convincing me to watch season yeah, two. Yeah, because it's got your boy. We've Game of Thrones did. <laughs> Which one's ahead? The books, the series? Who cares? The Craigs. <laughs> the Craigs. Never the Craigs. But yeah, any more news, Mark? No, no, that's uh, I'm all news out. Then that is the end of the news. We have completed the news. We have completed it, one hundred percent. But no, Achieve still no unlocked. trophy. Platinum unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> You'll scroll. That Whatever down. Nintendo gives you. <laughs> You're going to scroll that down so you can add that to your ready list. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Nobody knows what we're talking about. It's no. an ultra rare minus five percent ratio. Exactly. Hold on, Craig. Moving on. Swiftly. Yeah. Craft we'll, of the Wars. Should we just get into our main feature? Because I don't think we have a middle segment right now. Have um, you seen Jackie Brown? I've not seen Jackie Brown. Then let's move on. Let's move on to the next segment. <laughs> See you one day. Um, okay, so all three of us have seen this this time because I have been seeing the wrong films a lot recently. Or oh, it, I've been seeing them the day after we record. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we have all of us seen. Did you two go see it together? No. Man. No. I've no. seen it first. So we've all seen it individually. Definitive fan. So we have not had our opinion skewed by the others. Or by Mark, because Mark's generally the most biased. <laughs> but we... I have, like things. Objective we, Mark is always not biased. But we have seen Warcraft, the beginning. Mm-hmm. Or Warcraft, Warcraft, the movie. Yeah. Um, and... This isn't Overwatch. <laughs> Uh, we will obviously later on we'll, because this is going to be very Mark you are you played a lot of Warcraft Warcraft and World of Warcraft World, yeah. World of Warcraft as well so we will be going into there will most likely be lore discussions later on so we will give the spoiler warning when we get into the plot sort of side of things um, but we will go ahead first and say what were our general thoughts of this film like what did you guys think coming out of it Mark we'll start with you always being the most biased you hey. should fire first um yeah, so, you know, there's been a lot of, well, in my own head, I've picked this up a lot uh, over the past few <laughs> months, I suppose, because, you know, being the first, could be the first video game adaption that works as a, as a film. Um, so I had quite high expectations going in. And even though it has, you know, some issues, um, some sort of scripting issues, mm-hmm. a few a few bits that just didn't sit right, like overall... I thought it was extremely well done. I mean, mm-hmm. as far as the film, the film itself goes, extremely well made. Looks great. I think it's you know it's well cut and it's a uh, it, you know it captures the a fantasy setting very well. Mm-hmm. As far as Warcraft goes, it's fantastic. I mean, if you're a fan in any way of the lore or like what you know what goes on in the games, mm-hmm. it, it's the, you can't really not enjoy yeah. what has been brought to the screen. It's very you know it changes. It's things. a loyal depiction. It changes mm-hmm. things, but it's very faithful, and it's obviously trying to start its own franchise, which I'm more than happy with because what's like what they've actually managed to get across in you know mm-hmm. two hours can I assume yeah. like because I know you know some lore Craig mm-hmm. and you don't know much but that's quite a good earth, perspective to come from especially when it's coke as well because like oh where's the humour where's the funny and about <laughs> you know it's like there is a story and but there, like, a world to this it was really refreshing to have a real to have this kind of style of blockbuster I suppose mm-hmm. but really character focused and really mm, yeah. event driven mm-hmm. as opposed to just special effects and yeah. Like oh look what we can do oh look at all the shiny things mm-hmm. like, there was a lot of there's a lot going on there's a lot to take in there's a lot to enjoy they tried to flesh out the cultures quite a yeah, lot as well yeah. which was like, quite yeah, interesting yeah, it felt it felt real and also mm-hmm. one of Duncan Jones's you know Dunk Joe Dunk Joe Dunk Joe one mm-hmm. of um, you know his main 
things going on early is to depict the fact that there are heroes and villains on both sides. It's not as clear cut as yeah. For, like the easiest comparison is Lord of the Rings. It's not yeah. as clear cut as that. It's uh, it's all more the, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes when you've got different camps. I suppose so. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, it's you know it's not the good versus evil as such. Yeah. Even though the horde crossing over into into Azeroth is. Yeah, but it's more an act of manipulation, really, in a lot of ways. It's yeah. very, it's not it's something that you can, they, like you said, the, it's kind of humanity, even though, like, obviously not literally, but the humanity of yeah. both sides mm. is very much played. But to be loyal, world, obviously there were Warcraft games before World of Warcraft. Yeah, but, which is what this is based on. Yeah, but the World of Warcraft audience is their main audience now, yeah, probably. Yeah. And the World of World of Warcraft isn't good and evil in terms of those sides no, exactly. because those are two op- opposing sides but the player base could equally mm-hmm. play them and be played as you would as you know what generally happens in war the side that you are on is the side that you consider the right side generally yeah well the horde are bad but yeah <laughs> but you know what i mean like it's it's to make it to give it a loyal depiction they're showing both sides exactly both, yeah and which is what i was like saying is that was one of Duncan's like, main Missions, focus yeah. is going in mm-hmm. is to make a. It's not just to make a a big actiony film of oh look at all the good mm-hmm. humans killing all the bad orcs and that sort of thing. It was to depict like like yeah basically the world of Warcraft yeah. and the characters on both sides, which I think it very achieves very well. So visually, you've touched on how, how you felt about it visually, but Gorgeous. overall, yeah, I was going to say overall visually the CG in this, especially since we have two focal point characters. Which are is it Lothar? Lothar, yeah. Uh, is your human one, and then Duratan. Duratan is your uh, orc focal point. So basically, what alliance and uh, horde respectively. Yeah. But one of those is entirely CG. Yeah. One of those, every supporting character on that site is entirely CG. Except for the eyes. Except the eyes yeah. are very human. <laughs> <laughs> Windows to the soul, some people say. Um, and You'll get that on the review. So it, it, A million stars. <laughs> the eyes, they're very human. But Objective it's, mark. <laughs> that's one, that, so it did have to be convincing, and I thought it worked incredibly well mm-hmm. in that respect. Like the expressions, it's, even though everything... It's mental, it's too good. And they, and they did the really... Intri- they the armor looked way too big on the shoulders, which is what it's supposed to do. It's too small. It's too, it's far too small, but it met the, well, yeah, because they needed to walk, (laughs) (laughs) but they actually got that kind of look to it. Yeah. That almost Mm. ridiculous look. I I love that. I love that. I love black hand with his like, you know, massive, rhino skulls or whatever on his, like for his shoulder. He was carrying a caravan in his back, (laughs) but visually, in terms of the world and in terms of the characters that they showed, they all it all looked just amazing. Yeah, it was outstanding. Mm. It and didn't. That's look- all the new, unique features of all the orcs as well. And the way the the, the set design <clears throat> and also the the, the world CG, mm-hmm. I suppose, because you know the games, like particularly World of Warcraft, because even though like the story comes from Warcraft, mm-hmm. all the the uh, locations, I suppose, yeah. are taken more or less out of World of Warcraft. Yeah. Um, it kind of captures. It's not cartoony. The cartoony is not like doesn't do it it's, justice. It's um, it's stylized. I was gonna say stylized Sty- or yeah, expressive. Yeah, yeah, the expressive style of it. I mean, it's not like you know the buildings don't look like they would really work, but the the film takes that idea but then makes it a yeah. bit more grounded. That's yeah. So like it is Azeroth come to life, which is like really yeah. really good. So what, yeah, what we're clarifying is that it's. It's not that the, the the CG works really well and is really convincing, but it's not because it's grounded. It's because it just works within that world that they've created. Yeah, exactly. It works really within the confines of what they make and what they like the world building they do. It doesn't look out of place. It's not jarring. Mm-hmm. Like we, mm. we when we went to see Jungle Book and the last film we spoke yeah, about on this, yeah. we said it was quite jarring at first mm. when you yeah. you have to adapt to that. I never had that with this because we're introduced to the CG. The entire first act of this the f- first part of this film is all CG. The entire first section. The very first part. It's yeah. The, but there's it's the, one, there's one actress who is not <laughs> yeah. in that whole first part. And well, n- no, all the, all the Drenai are, Oh, are they? Yeah. They're, so? they're not all They're I don't think they're all CG. I think. They're, okay. But the, you know what I mean? The maj- the vast majority of that yeah, is, yeah. and it works so well. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, especially the eyes. Uh, <laughs> it's all in the eyes. Windows the soul. Ninety percent um, eyes. Yeah. Uh, in terms of so, 
we've said that they all looked quite good visually. Some of this again will be down to how it's put across and the CG is done, but that's the way this sort of film is. How do you feel the performances were? And a lot of them will most likely be voice acting because I don't know if mocap was done for this. Yes, film. it was. It was yeah, mocap it was as well. Mo-cap. Okay, that's yeah. very good as well. So it's it's is down to the performances. It's when you see like they've got a lot of great pictures of like you know the half. half yeah. Face and it's oh mental. yeah, yeah. They, they do. They do. Look, yeah. yeah. They do look like them. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Toby Cabell as well. Yeah. 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 Clancy Brown's voice. I you you know it's made to be an Oryx. <laughs> yeah. I because even like when he did this Comic Con thing, he did the. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But they, you go, Clancy. Tom Clancy Brown. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they, they. I thought the performances were really good. There are a couple of odd, melod like I. The way I felt about the film overall uh, was I. I thought I thought the story. If you read this story through, mm-hmm. great. Really entrenched in the lore, but not bad. Not doesn't spoon feed you. The yeah, information. exactly. That's the why. Yeah, yeah. But it works really yeah. well, even though stuff I knew from the games that is the reason behind things if you didn't know that going into this film there's things that happen that you could think happened for a different reason that work within the confines of the film yeah. but if you know the lore overall you yeah. know a different reason for it and so yeah. it kind of works on different levels which I really appreciate the only thing I did think was odd which I think is probably due to the style of filming is there are par- parts that do feel oddly melodramatic but only very few little bits. And it's bizarre because it's the parts, all, none of the parts with orcs mm. felt like it's, that to me. It's all the stuff with Medivh and Cadgar. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There are parts like that that don't, I feel like it's, if this film had a recut, it could be so yeah, much if, more. If, if there's a bit like, more, a bit more exposition put into it. It's, yeah. it's exactly what you're saying because the, you know, the stuff with Cadgar and Lothar and Medivh mm-hmm. and all that stuff is quite an expansive part of the story and mm-hmm. then they try to you know to condense it all down to what amounts to probably about 20 minutes it goes very Dungeons minutes and Dragons at a couple of points and I was just a bit okay this is this is a bit weird but it doesn't detract that overall story is really interesting the cultural stuff I mm. thought was excellent but again mm-hmm. all that I yeah. don't I don't think was bad mm-hmm. like, yeah it, it is it's a bit over the top but that's just in yeah. a way it comes down to again yeah like you said the way it was cut mm-hmm. but I still thought it was good no I definitely don't think it detracts from the film overall like as a whole it's just there's a couple parts mm. where I was like this is a bit too swashbuckly adventure at points and I was like I'm not sure about this there's a they're b- trying to make and then next, too and the next scene, there's some really graphic violence in a war and I was just like yeah. okay but um, overall no it was it was especially because this is a film I went in with very low expectations for because in all honesty you see the review aggregate for this yeah, film it's and terrible. it's been destroyed mm absolutely decimated yeah but but by critics that like almost don't know it almost seems like they don't know what they're talking about mm. like the way a lot of them are talking about it yeah well it's mm. it's again it's made for fans but I do think that you can enjoy this without being a fan yeah, yeah. Well, I've seen it three times now each with different people one of them like Claire who knows a bit about Warcraft mm-hmm. um, but not enough yeah, yeah. to like go oh yeah yeah this 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 and uh, she like really enjoyed it and then two other people who know nothing about it mm-hmm. and they still really enjoyed it they had questions so like well why was this happening who was that guy you know, like you know who was possessing Medivh and all that sort of stuff yeah like that's never explained it doesn't need to be really yeah but again I, I took film. a different I took a different reason yeah. for that and stuff so also to leave with stuff like that's quite interesting you mm-hmm. know because also we're we're sort of getting conditioned to this thing where we sort of know everything or everything just being spoon fed uh-huh. and also that was, a, that was a point for me it was so refreshing going into something I basically knew nothing about mm-hmm. yeah. and I had to keep up with oh what's this storm wind and blah 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 yeah, so how did, how did you feel overall about yeah I was like, going to ask before we go the, into any proper plot details yeah, ab- about the plot and about the structure and about the way the film progressed in the story like how did that come across to you yeah I thought it was all pretty cool I liked um, I guess same sort of and what you guys are saying all the orc stuff is fantastic mm-hmm. uh, the human stuff is a bit discordant but I still like where it goes mm-hmm. I also like how fearless it's been just with like all the other films we've seen previously this year with its use of characters mm-hmm. and what they did with it it went a lot of places I wasn't expecting and also like the future setup I thought was really cool yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know create a lot of interesting things for what's going to it wasn't Hopefully afraid to say it was going to go because this is yeah, the thing with yeah. being a part of a game universe especially when it's always like you know oh seven might get green light green light it's like okay cards are on the table this is how it's going to go yeah. but it's where it works being this kind of property because it's not like it's an it's an adaption of the game it's almost they've set it up as a prequel to 
it has aspects of the game, but it is almost like you can enjoy this as a separate as aspect well as, or as part yeah, of the universe. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, well, it's, it, it takes up like uh, about mm-hmm. three, about two thirds or so of the first game of Warcraft. Yeah, with like the orcs crossing over mm-hmm. and things like that. So it's it's like stuff that's briefly covered in the game. But yeah, a lot of the actual exposition of the lore is then covered in world of yeah, warcraft yeah. and later games and also it does a lot for other stuff fiction that, as well yeah yeah it does a lot for something that's two hours mm. Mm. Like, yeah it, it felt so much longer yeah. because there was so much stuff in it yeah. that, that's what that's why it's extremely well cut mm-hmm. like the actual the way the film is edited yeah. i think is superb mm-hmm. the um no i it's it's just because of the the fact that it's if it didn't get a sequel even though at the point of recording this week, it's it's opened in China and it's, it's done exceedingly ridiculously well. well over there. You always wait for China. <laughs> you <laughs> always wait for China. But um, it's it, even if it didn't get a sequel, it goes into the games. It's got this mm. kind of logical transition. I, can't, yeah. I honestly, I can't see it not getting a sequel because with an yeah. all Asian cast released in China, <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> the the success it has had, and it's also got Blizzard behind it. I mean, and Blizzard and it's safe to keep Dunk Joe. If I don't know if he wants yeah. to do that. Oh, yeah. actually, well, I was going to save this till later on to see Dunk where you want to go. Yeah. But he said he wanted to do three. Oh, he did say that? He said he has said in he enjoyed making it overall, even though it's had some development issues. Yeah, yeah. But he said he wanted to make three. Hmm. He would. He was. He had an idea for make. He said he wanted to make a very a, a solid fantasy trilogy, and he had ideas for going forward. Superb. I, I'm more. I'm, like Moon is one of my favorite films like and he also did Source Code as well yeah it's one of our favorite Sorry, films Mike. one of our favorite films um, but yeah great film it, it, yeah. it really is and I'm glad that that was made I have no issue with Duncan Jones doing three Warcraft films like I think he's the right person for it because mm-hmm. he's got such a love of it as it is because you know he wrote yeah. this or he wrote this he, with the because yeah. he's, he's very he speaks he's very open with Blizzard and the whole mm. process as yeah, well so yeah um, and Blizzard are just like generally good guys. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Blizzard are great. Like, yeah. yeah, best game developer there, out there, in but my opinion. Overwatch, Overwatch, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But the um, podcast, podcast. But I was going to say, so we should probably just go into. We'll give the spoiler warning now. We've said a couple yeah. little things. Yeah, because it's quite tricky to discuss this with. Yeah, because especially as well happens. as that, we don't want to stop Mark talking about lore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as he pulls out his scrolls uh, but yeah we'll go, we'll go into the spoiler territory now and also that's another thing is, is it was really funny yeah there's a lot of solid laughs in this thing there are I get it, it, it was yeah exactly like they are, it's a more Murloc Murloc, Murloc. Uh, that just because I've I played it, it was I only remembered it because I played Hearthstone I'm yeah. not calling it Hearthstone I hate calling it Hearthstone it's not Hearthstone it's Hearthstone and um, oh what's the remix go again but when uh, they, the, the part where he goes over the bridge yeah. and all you hear is that well, there, there, there's, and there's, was, a, there's a murloc standing in the foreground standing and there going, yeah and I was just I was laughing to yeah. myself was it again it's get out your axis or something I can't remember oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking yeah. about I know what you're talking da, 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 <laughs> about <laughs> and um, but there was there's loads of, the way this story went I really did enjoy it but again the the development of the or characters through it was far more interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. There were the, the just because their politics, there was a lot more things happening. The over yeah, the overall stuff going on with the orcs was a lot more focused, and I, yeah, I, I preferred it as well. But I think the the best thing for me, and almost one of the best performances, was actually Cadgar and his arc from when I first heard his American accent I wasn't too happy I'm not gonna <laughs> lie because he, it just felt really out of place I didn't, I didn't mind it but I, uh, I, I don't really pick up on accents that much so it's never really I don't know it's weird when it's because we've, I've been conditioned due to fan, like with fantasy films that everyone sounds either English or of an, <laughs> an European yeah. nationality yeah, yeah. Yeah. as soon as someone's like I'm here to fight the medieval horde and I'm like oh god <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, one no. thing I loved as well from the start of it though was like they had no idea what the hell they were facing yeah yeah you know like, what, what can you tell us about them I think they're quite big it's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of green um, yeah. but the no it, like his his performance as it went got better yeah. and better yeah. I, thought, really I, thought was, on you. I thought it was brilliant um, what's Fim, something Fimmel what's his first name the oh, person Travis, Travis Fimmel yeah. I'm not sure if he'll be back you think because he said he didn't enjoy shooting this oh, because he's yeah. he's one of these yeah. quite eccentric actors yeah mm-hmm. and 
he loves Vikings and he loves how practical that is because obviously that's what he made yeah, his name yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. And um, he said he very much preferred filming that to this because this again so much obviously green yeah yeah um, and he did mention before, but I don't know how he's like, that was a long time ago. Yeah. That was in an interview. Maybe, yeah, maybe now this film has been, this film's release was held off for a long time. Yeah. It was supposed Mm. to be a Christmas release, but it it, didn't get a huge amount of advertising. It was supposed to be a Christmas release going up against star Wars. Yeah. So that's why it was not why, but you know, it's also a shooting, it's shooting yourself in the foot in all honesty. Mm. So it was Um, pushed back to now, but I I thought, I thought he was good enough as Lothar. I mean, he was, he was he was good, but yeah, he wasn't this is lower the, man talking. He wasn't the outstanding performance for me, but mm-hmm. like, but that's odd because that as well as that he was our cent he was our focal point for them mm-hmm. really because they said is that's what um, Jones said. You have these two focal points. Mm-hmm. One thing I thought was very good, which is a big spoiler. Which is, is it Duratan? I keep, for, I've only seen it today, remember? Yeah, Duratan. Yeah, Duratan. Duratan yeah. Um, well, I assume you're talking about Duratan. Yeah, the main focus the for their side yeah. and uh, for the Horde. And the fact that they, the way they killed him off was really well done, I thought. Mm-hmm. And also was quite, it wasn't quite the brilliant. end. It was no, actually, yeah. it was quite early on. Not early on, but you know what I mean? It was early for a focal point character. Yeah. Um, and then it sort of shifted, it, even though it kind of, I don't think he was the main essentially horrid focal point because there was also uh i'm trying to remember the lady's name um starts with g no oh, corona yeah corona essentially was the transition at that point who became mm-hmm. your focal point for their side and if they go into a future mm-hmm. film she would be your central point for them mm. the um, hybrid yes and um i thought that hh- a duratan the duratan character through the whole film was excellent mm-hmm. yeah he was really the boy well. yeah duratan exactly. was great I like um, Gul'dan as well. Gul'dan was... Gul'dan was very good. Yeah. Very menacing. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you straight away saw him and was like, well, he's evil. <laughs> he's definitely evil. There's no way he's not evil. And then he kills Bambi, and you're like, definitely evil. <laughs> I was like, man, they are definitely trying to sell the fact he's evil. <laughs> what <laughs> else did save kill? a child. Yeah. But. It's, there, was, there was some really, like... I was I, I saw this in at 12 o'clock on a Sunday... <laughs> in a family showing and there's a lot of graphic stuff in this film but it works because it's such a mental fantasy world mm. graphic there's like magic well there's the guy that was it he stabs someone and then he crushes the ne- guy oh, next yeah, to his head yeah, and I was yeah. like no, and black hands going mental at the end yeah, yeah and I was like wow <laughs> oh literal wow well. <laughs> <laughs> but no it was uh, it the way they explore the world of the whole thing the world excellent of Warcraft uh, how do you feel about <laughs> Ben Foster Interesting. I'm not sure if it's the character he's playing because Ben Foster is a mental actor. No, he is a very oh, good yeah. actor. He's he's crazy method actor. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not too sure of his take in Medivh. I mean, he kind of he doesn't ham it up, but he does kind of take it to a. Uh, yeah, it's just I think it's just like his manner and stuff. And he's yeah, like, do you know what it reminded? This. You know what it straight away reminded me of? <laughs> and it's not because it's anything like it, but it's because of this weird performance. And it's uh, and it relates to Jones because it was his dad in uh, the Prestige, David Bowie in the Prestige oh, when, he played, uh, when he played Tesla. Yeah. And, it, and he's just like, "Don't use the machines. <laughs> <laughs> if that is my advice, you destroy it." And I was like, "Okay, it's this weird detached character." Uh-huh. And yeah. that's what he was. He was just kind of. He, he he looked like he was, you know, in pain, but in a very, you know, upper class kind of way. It's like, oh, an upper I don't class know. method pain. Yeah, exactly. It was just, it was really odd. But again, for someone who is known for being a very full on actor, mm-hmm. like even in little roles like in uh, 30 Days of Night, mm. where he had to play a man who was in a jail cell, it was quite a tortured character, and he put a bulldog clip on his baby toe so he could act like he was writhing all the time and yeah. really feel off to then go and do something like this, which is very, you have to use your imagination. It's green screen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like especially yeah. his stuff. Cause he's in that tower most mm-hmm. of the time. Mm-hmm. And so it's all going to be green screen around him. So it's, it's very different for what I expect of Enfall, especially cause what was the last film that came out for him? The Armstrong one. Ooh, maybe. Which again is going to be a very practical. F- like he would be. He yeah. was another one of these like mental into the you know into the mind of that yeah, person yeah, kind the, of roles. The program. Yeah. This is so different. And a mechanic with Jason Statham. And a mechanic with Jason Statham. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
It's it's odd. I wasn't quite sure about him in that role. Yeah, he's not exactly what I imagined Medivh would be like, but still, I think. I was distracted by the wee kid sorcerer with his wee mustache. Kagar's yeah, yeah Kagar's okay. bad facial hair. Yeah. But yeah, he's a, he's only a boy. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I mean, the, there is some of the some of the performances weren't either what I expected. It's or, the world building that really works. Yeah, for this. exactly. It's it's the film as a whole. It's the yeah. Oh, for God, <laughs> it was the, the world building of, of Warcraft, Warcraft. <laughs> that really worked. This, in this could be the end of the world of, of Warcraft. Warcraft. <laughs> but um, it was really good. I don't know what it was about Thingy is the King. Um, Dominic Cooper, oh, Dominic yeah, Cooper yeah. is the King. Something was really weird to me. It's about weird because he looked the un Dominic Cooper. And he like, did. This is yeah. Bizarre. His really weird hair and his bizarre crown. The whole time I was just like, something doesn't sit right about you being King Dominic yeah. Cooper. I think he played it well, but I mean, it was that was another performance that wasn't bad. But it was very, you know, fantasy king, yeah. like almost Disney. Pompous. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, well, no, not pomp. Po- there's, there's a lot of pomp in that yeah, sort of term yeah. of it. You know, there's a lot of... <laughs> it's not pompous, it's just a bit of light you know, pomp. pomp. Yeah, the pomp. Like, it's, yeah. it was made to be over grand and quite yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah. Um, grand was. Yeah. Also, grand voice. <laughs> then also that boy's son was like, oh. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. Callum, yeah. I'm so the, glad he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing that... The one part that re- this bugs me in a lot of films, and it's the let's have a conversation in a battle, and they they do establish that yeah, it's like, no yeah. one's gonna kill you yet. This is a perfect place for an ambush. Up. It's like no, no, not that one. No, the yeah. the part in the war in front of the gate at the end, and he's like, and Dominic Cooper, and I keep forgetting her name. <laughs> um, not Gamora. Paul Patton. Hmm? Paula Patton. Yeah, but they're when they're standing. Oh, sorry, the character Gorona. Yeah, Gorona. Yeah. When they're standing in front of the gate, and I'm going to tell you the plot they, line for the next setup for the next part. Just yeah. kill me so you get a more thing in the chief. Yeah, exactly. And, but they establish yeah. the fact that it's like, oh, no one's going to kill you yet yeah. because it's got to be the chieftain who does it for the. Yeah. But still, we're seeing all of this stuff happen in the background yeah. as they're having this conversation while serene music plays. And I'm like, please don't do this now. Please, you're just you're just detracting from the really awesome war that's happening. Mm. Please stop. Yeah. Please don't do this. Make it a bit more nice, guys. Also felt really bad for the five people that didn't get through the gate. Yeah. No, one of them did get through at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why didn't the rest of them even attempt it? I don't know. It's like he went through that last sliver, and there was a lot of time for them to get through. Yeah. They deserve to die, actually. I changed my mind. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. We thought. They're not (laughs) go-getters. I mean, I see see what you mean, but a lot of the the lore has changed there, because Corona does assassinate lane but it's under control yeah Yeah. she's under mind control by Gul'dan and yeah well the other that's the other thing I was saying with the layered lore it was um Ben Foster's character when I because I I I took me ages to actually remember the whole situation but the him being possessed by the demons yeah is a is something that happened previously from his birth in the lore He's possess- He's got that. He's essentially the vessel for that demon from from birth. Mm. But I thought he'd been corrupted due to contact with um, the fell through the through the course of the film. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because obviously you don't know about that backstory. You yeah. don't know about it, and it, it, you won't because it's, it's essentially his role is removed now. Yeah. But it works on those two levels because I thought, oh, it's because you know he's in the, he's been in contact with it through the course of the film, mm-hmm. and it's affected him. But obviously, if you're a Warcraft fan, you know about that extra bit of lore, and mm-hmm. that's why it happens. And then he gets all spiky chinned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the technical Warcraft term. Yeah, but they don't. Assi- I'm sure in the lore aren't the, it, he was a childhood friend of Lothar and the king. Uh, I'm sure they're all childhood friends and in this I didn't really get they were just like old friend but then it was in that whole fantasy yeah, where yeah. you could literally Everyone's meet a guy your in a, old friend. yeah you can meet a guy in a pub and be like old friend it's like well we met once in the supermarket but okay yeah Medi- <laughs> medieval supermarket <laughs> but um, no it's again it's the whole th- the thing that really works with this is the world building and again the whole orc society stuff is done really well that's that's characters I just never if I played the game, I would never... Like, if I'd played World of Warcraft, I would have never uh, picked to be an orc character. Or, yeah. There's no. Just nothing like it, but no, no one likes that. <laughs> but only, this, only 60% of the player base. <laughs> no, me. But when you actually look at this film, it does make a... Re- it makes them seem quite cool. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. I, 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 Mark, I, what I, side I, did you go with? <laughs> wait, no, wait. I can guess this because this is Mark Jeffrey. He is some tall character, probably a human or something along those lines. It's just like in thingy where he's like the Norse guy. Dwarf, he, always, he always plays the tallest human he can or human-like thing, and he plays as a paladin. Nah. <laughs> Am I right, Mark? Nah. A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> Every game. <laughs> Tall, blonde, beard, paladin. Yeah, exactly. Human. The Mark, Ar- the Mark archetype. Yeah, I've got more than one character, though. Did the you like the character. use of magic? The magic, I actually thought, looked quite cool in this. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah I thought it was fantastic. Especially if it was when bo- it starts in the woods and everyone's like, what the... <laughs> well, I like um, just like the rune circles and things. Yeah. And like it was, yeah, that, that was another thing I meant to mention, but it slipped my mind. Yeah, the, the way the magic was portrayed was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Especially since they did the Star Wars thing where you pick a colour to be good or bad. It's like blue. Your blue stuff was good. Your green mm-hmm. stuff was bad. So at least we could differentiate between them. Well, it's mm-hmm. just uh, arcane magic. I mean, which is technically purple. Mm-hmm. But... This guy... <laughs> this guy. That was the extra one. I don't <laughs> want to confuse them until the next film. Because then, like, he also had the the, the fire magic as oh, well. They also had gold magic, yeah, which so. overpowered all of them. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I don't understand that. But I mean, what Cadgar respect midway through the film just to cast that fireball? Yeah, pretty much. Mm. <laughs> Need to do that. It's vital. And then but also yeah. Glenn Close in that little bit. When the thing he opens and yeah. then they're like, I was like, well, why is what, what do I do with this? Yeah, no, I, yeah. I saw her and I was just like, is this Glenn Close? I couldn't work out who it was. Yeah, and I, I, I never bothered to look it up. You know, you said that. Yeah. Whenever I see an older uh, blonde woman in a film, I always go to the system. It's Meryl which Streep. Is, it's e- no, no. It's either I know Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah. It's either Glenn. It's either Glenn Close. Helen Mirren. Or no, no. Again, I could tell her Helen Hunt. No, you guys are not going to give me a chance. Although I do get her mixed up with someone else. I basically everyone's in twos. It's <laughs> how I always work. Um, Henry Cavill, Matt Bomer. <laughs> <laughs> they are um, the same person. Yeah. So it is Chanel, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Um, it's Katie Glenn Perry. Close, and who was the one that was married to Alec Baldwin? Uh, Basinger, Kim, ba- Kim, Kim Basinger. Basinger, yeah. Basinger or Basinger? I always yeah. get that. I'm, I'm like, okay, it's one of those two. That's really the way I always work. Okay. But. Do we have anything else to say about this film? Because we've gone on for quite a while. So anyone we're forgetting. Moving on to scores. <laughs> all right, are we are we all ready? To give hey, we still, I still it? don't think we've talked enough about. I know, it. I don't think we have. Yeah. Like, Especially you, lore man. Well, I mean, like you've got dwarfs. You've got. Yeah, there was like a ton of dwarfs. We got little glimpses of races, yeah. which I thought was quite good. Yeah, you don't want to saturate you see, this you film. You got the dwarfs yeah. and, you ah, got and a couple the, of the elves and stuff. Well, yeah, they're like, they're technically the high elves. I think at this yeah. point, just before were they blood? Uh, they I get corrupted. The blood elves, and then there's, and there's wood night, elves, okay. night elves, yeah, night, night elves. elves. Yeah. Which we, yeah, we didn't see night elves. Alright, so no. what sort of scenes did you find were quite jarring? I thought like maybe the forest scene. Oh, occasional parts let's recut this so I can say this now yeah <laughs> um, this, the parts that I specifically found jarring were the whole golem fight in the tower mm. yeah, yeah. That it was, became that really was campy weird. and weird because there's this big epic thing happening and this is supposed to be a major part of that yeah because I don't like that the, they used the golem to kill Medivh that was weird it was just all really weird that whole part because Gul'dan and Medivh were the two sort of antagonist focal points mm. and Gul'dan, you had this kind of menacing aura about him, and it seemed very big. I felt like they undermined Medivh yeah, at that whole did. point. Mm. He just didn't feel like a serious threat, because they're joking away or doing these little banterous bits. Yeah. But What should I do? Oh, just keep trying to throw some the, rocks at But him. as well as that, like there wasn't this understanding of the space they were in, mm. yeah. because they kept falling into little nooks and crannies, or hiding in little corners, and it just felt really... It it just felt really odd. It was almost like, like a it was a comedy sequence yeah. to a degree, and it just yeah. really it it really with the whole death like of Medivh at that point, yeah. it should have been really sad, but it wasn't it, because the that actual the up. actual death was sad when he's like yeah. almost atoning for what he's done, opening the portal to Stormer and all that. That was nice, and like but it's the, a shame that it had that build up. To yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, it does and th- that take away really off. The golem That's, was weird. That whole that whole tower section could, should have been made up to be a lot more epic than it was. Yeah. That was an that should have been an epic confrontation mm. rather than this really almost campy confrontation. Yeah. Mm. While the Gul'dan one was a was so yeah brutal over, like yeah. brutal and over the top um and they just worked really odd again the the king's death scene there's parts around that that didn't quite work for me i know so it was and quite funny them that's with, quite funny though like compared to the trailer like you know because that's like the one of the last scenes and then like his mm-hmm. body's just edited out yeah for that part yeah you know um, and it's like him raising the sword mm-hmm 
it's just it's really there's there's just some really odd bits how did you feel about the death thing is sun dying did you see hear it. that scene i actually didn't mind that scene i didn't I mind I it like it. it's like it's not gonna be in anymore see it coming a yeah. mile away yeah mm-hmm. Like you see, yeah, you, you can see it coming as soon as he's introduced the start, and it's yeah. like, yeah. stop trying to put Callum with me. Like he wants yeah. to fight with his dad. No, like yeah, it's yeah. really telegraphed. It's, and also as well, that's got your other favorite thing—a conversation in battle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a shouting like, through lightning. Yeah, but the battle scenes. It's okay, done. Father. I know what's going to happen. The scale of those, battle, the scale of those yeah. battle scenes and the way the battle scenes are done are really good. It's just a shame that they have these really weird moments around them. They yeah. could have yeah. just focused on those battle scenes and had the events within them. The Medivh thing just felt like a real detraction from that, yeah. which was a yeah. shame because, like you said, the cool death stuff in the was end happening. was interesting. Yeah. It's I mean, just a shame that that happened. The bit, no, the bit with like Medivh was fine. Like when they they show up and then Medivh like grabs Lothar and then Kagor mm-hmm. comes in and then there's that little bit of a battle but then it has and this then, offshoot yeah but then then the golem goes running around but then there's Medivh walking into the font like the, you know he fights Lothar yeah, 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 and he throws goes, Lothar across the font walks mm-hmm. into the font becomes like this representation of Sargeras mm-hmm. that's all awesome but then he just dropped the golem on him which like it's really weird yeah I mean I, I did like the, the fact they were showing kind of the difference in power between mm-hmm. Um, Khadgar and Medivh as well, yeah. particularly with the the, uh, the teleport spell mm-hmm. and the fact that you know Medivh can just cast it, but Lothar had sorry Khadgar had to actually write yes to write yes to draw the yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. like draw a lot of power to do it. That was all really cool. Yeah, it was the golem that just completely yeah. What was the was there a particular relevance with him going up to the floating sea? I thought the floating sea looked amazing when he went. Dalaran to it. isn't floating at this point. Okay, um, Dalaran is just a. Uh, it's just another city. It's the city of the Kieran Tours. It's the city of mages. They say floating city in the film. Yeah, yeah, but it, it is floating. But yeah. at this point in the story, it's not floating. It's like a significant part of the lore that yeah. changes Dalaran to become a floating city. Okay. But I think the idea of that was coming from WoW. It's floating in WoW. Mm-hmm. Um, so everyone's like, like you, you kind of know as Dalaran is the floating city. Yeah. And it makes it more grand, grand I suppose for yeah. the city of the mages mm-hmm. you know, it was hard to get to and all that so that's why they, they did it it's just a, a small change it's just the whole thing with the cube and stuff and him getting it it was a really elaborate thing to put into for someone who didn't know that aspect of the lore and for you Urban, do you feel it was quite odd that that was a really weird thing to put in for him to just get a power boost to a degree or to you know get this kind of message and it was a really cryptic message he even got at the end yeah. it's like oh wait no Glenn Close has got some green stuff uh, yeah. <laughs> in a darkness comes something something light something some dark- light something. comes from darkness yeah. darkness yeah. comes from light uh, also fishbowl yeah no did, did, was there this weird subtext this is just me I don't know this far back because Blizzard credit to them and fans and stuff as well over this time the Warcraft lore goes over generations yeah, yeah, yeah. generations like well, the, the degrees it goes back is, is insane I mean mm-hmm. Aladai like the the thing in the cube was mm-hmm. the first guardian yeah of Azeroth like before because Medivh's the last guardian the last guardian yeah um, and but it's there is the, when no one is pulling out the pages in the book and uh, that sort of thing I got this it was weird maybe I completely read it wrong but were the orcs on our world and then sent through the gate originally what do you mean as in you know how they said the orcs came through the gate yeah they said there's something that is it Karagar Khadgar Khadgar says where he says something like they were sent through the gate from our world originally called through like so uh, oh, so that, was, Sargaris, that was a hint at Medivh yeah, yes. calling yeah, them through. Yeah. Okay. So Sadar, I thought that he had sorry. banished them through there no, no, originally. Because no, 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 that's, they're, they're, Dra- cause that's Draenor, isn't it? That's Draenor, it? yeah, yeah. That is Draenor. With the Draenei, which were the, the blue things. That I only just made that connection. I know about the Draenei. The, Draenei, Draenei, the Draenei are the blue things that you sacrificed to open the gate. Yeah. Mm. And another they don't thing, look anything like the Draenei in yeah, the yeah. game to me. exactly like the Draenei. I just thought they were bigger. and they had The males are bigger. Oh, okay. The females look like that. They're really skinny and like shorter horns. They're based on the Protoss, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, love the Protoss. That was another another thing that's another misconception where everyone's assuming that, like, you know, Garona's talked about as being, like, you know, half-breed. Yeah, she's not. What do you, what do you think she is? She's half Draenei. Yeah. Yeah. She's half work, mm. half Draenei. Everyone, just, everyone kind of... assumes she's half human. So a lot of the questions are, is like, so have the humans crossed over to, like, the, the orc world already? And... Like is that where she comes from? No, she's she's half Draenei. Although in this one, they seem to have strongly hinted that her 
it, her it, dad was her medieval. dad was medieval. Yeah, I was really, I was really confused with that. I was like, I th- I'd hope that isn't like what where they're going because that's mm. just weird. There would be no point to reveal it at this uh, anyway. Yeah, now, well, unless unless there's some like other thing they're going for further down the line. Yeah, and she's yeah. now possessed by Sargeras or something. Yeah, because I I remember thinking she's half an eye, but that and, and it's just by, she just appears very human. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, she's quite funny. She's yeah. quite she's quite Thor at the start. It's like this little human wants to mate with me. I will break him. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so going back to what you were saying, it's uh, so Sargeras is the demon has. Uh, possessed. possessed the demon so going back to what he said the demon is possessed Medivh and like he's the the leader of like the burning crusade basically yeah. the burning legion um, which is like old demon warriors and the fell and all that mm-hmm. uh, so he's talking to Gul'dan from across yeah the dimensions I suppose which is, in all honesty I know they didn't spoon feed people but they could that could have been clearer to people that didn't know that aspect of the lore. I do think that they could have shown... Because as you're watching the film, you can put that together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you're just being carried along with the film, you're more, you know, you're not really paying attention to that, which can, you know, if you're just casually watching a film, can happen. Mm. You might not pick up on that at all. Yeah, well, you, it's can, almost you, kind you, of could, you could miss, miss certain plot points. But I mean, like, again, I knew what it was, mm-hmm. but it did say, you know, they were invited like, yeah, yeah, it's very yeah. cryptic. But then again, I do think that's. It depends how you're. Because I came at across it. quite a couple of times, you know, like the whole invitation things mm-hmm. being summoned. But so it's it's, it's just the fact that it's not almost. You come to expect emphatic statements in films to a degree. I think a bit too much, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's one of those things that I had to really think about to really pick up on it. Yeah. And I don't think you need to spoon feed stuff to people. But there's times where I do think that'll be that will not be clear. Like it, there yeah. will be people watching it, and it's not particularly clear. But then I'm not sure if you really need that. Mm. to enjoy the film you no just, no no, not oh, no it's, a, it's a small it's you a small part it. but you need to know yeah. because then the, that also <laughs> that's why i was meaning by talking about garona that it's never explicitly said what her lineage is yeah um which again might be because Medivh is her father but it's not specifically said so people assume that the humans have already gone over yeah. to drenor but, but we don't know what she did with the flower <laughs> she dropped it <laughs> she clearly drops it when she could teleport it's like this is my gift to you whoops no, no. It's okay. some sort of magical superpower flower. She's going to be all like super, super Mario. She's like, <laughs> Fire <laughs> flower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The next exactly. little crossover. Uh, exactly. But no, I'm, I, I think we're all hoping that they do another sequel. And, oh, yeah, and yeah. Jones can... does a sequel as well. I'm... But I hope it gets a... This film needs... This can't be a Pacific Rim it needs a good release window. Again. Yes. yes. This needs yes. to be two to three years yes. that this will come out. It needs to keep if, the interest going. If this comes out, this, this, it's really odd that Warcraft is coming out now for at least the Western world because Warcraft has had its, it's always going to be, it's always going to have its, ma- its large audience, especially for MMOs, but it's not as big as it was a few years back. How, how are we talking a few years back? Because well, Warlords it, of Draenor brought back so it many brought back people. a lot of people. But I mean, as in it was it was also the mainstream talk of games for mm. a long time. And now we are very fickle with games because things come out constantly, and they are always the next big thing. Who plays games? Um, the thing, the and thing even is, their I, even their model for MMOs is not. Mm. It doesn't work by a lot of others. They 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 established it. Yeah, exactly. That's what the thing it. is. The thing is with but, WoW is it's you. Know, it was the biggest MMO for so long. It still is. So many oh, different yeah, things yeah. have come. Try to take the the its a model has not model been effectively and replicated. adapted it. And the, like a lot of these games are still going. You know, Guild Wars Two and mm-hmm. like older franchises are still going with their yeah. dedicated fan base. But it's nothing compared to the scale of WoW. Yeah. Um, and then also this all crosses over to all yeah. other licenses as well that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, for much. Well, uh, here is a storm, know, know. but. Um, <laughs> And Hearthstone and things, but like, yeah, I, I really do hope that a sequel co- goes ahead and it yeah. is, like you said, sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. Um, because although I think Warcraft will always keep going and things like that, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be as prevalent mm-hmm. 
in years to come and it'd be good if they if we didn't have to wait five years per yeah. film or something it'd be quite funny though if it was like you know Garth Edwards is like I'm not going to do the Godzilla sequel I'm going to do smaller things like Warcraft, Warcraft. <laughs> that'd be amazing well who remember who originally was directing this it was, it was Sam Raimi it was Sam Raimi mm. and he dropped out that, when you think about how long this film was yeah, that, was like ten, that was like 10 years ago though. yeah it's mental how long this has been development and, and then also it was his, his thing would have been quite interesting because it would have been you know a lot more humour based mm. I'm assuming anyway don't know. For Don't know. Yeah. yeah. No. I'd li- have like Bruce talk- Campbell in it. Yeah, I know. I, I, I don't know. But, it's- then, but then Sam would be just directing, he'd be directing a script that someone else had written. Yeah, whereas, yeah. So yeah. it might not have been as... Yeah, but I hope they go ahead and... I, I, I don't, has anyone seen any interviews with Blizzard about this and how they've really thought of it overall? Not it's weird since they, they it's didn't released. release a lot of stuff. Yeah, because a lot of the interviews there was they a, didn't release. There was a lot of coverage before. on it at last BlizzCon, which was yeah. November. There was a like there was panels. This one's probably been final. Uh, been in its final. Cut yeah, for yeah, a yeah. Long time. Like, and everyone, everyone was was pleased with it. Like mm-hmm. all the the Blizzard high up staff and Duncan Jones was there. Some of the, the cast mm-hmm. were there, all talking about it, and everyone was ecstatic about it like things were shown at BlizzCon like that weren't streamed so no one mm-hmm. actually got to like, yeah. outside or got to see it but the reaction from Blizzard fans was outstanding and all that mm-hmm. um, I like, yeah the critics have, have destroyed it which is just unfair in my opinion but again critics it's just opinion mm-hmm. and you know just because everyone like not you everyone you need to make, see it. it yourself to make your own opinion exactly yeah. to see it to make your own opinion but the oh, the general consensus from the public has been supportive. Mm-hmm. It's been mid middle ground. Also, because as well, really good fantasy is bigger than Lord of the Rings that's, and Game of Thrones. That's why I was you know? gonna. That's why I was gonna. Yeah. I was gonna ask in a minute. I mean, it is bringing back fantastical fantasy, not high fantasy. Yeah, or yeah. Not not yeah. Game of Thrones. Not what Game of Thrones is trying to be. Um, which is different to what the books are, but uh, not what it even to an extent kind of what Lord of the Rings was like mm-hmm. in terms of the the novels yeah um and the older lore of of uh yeah it has an over-the-top middle earth and things it. yeah um and i was just wondering what your thoughts on it were compared to things like that like for instance compared to the, the hobbit trilogy hobbit's See, I, garbage <laughs> straight the first hobbit was great i love the first one there's a lot of nostalgia dipping yeah. with the Are first you talking one. about the Hobbit or talking about the style of the Hobbit as like Lord of the Rings, things like that as a whole? I'm talking I'm talking about the, the style, um the approach to fantasy. The approach to fantasy. So you can take all of that into account really, yeah. yeah. No, uh, I really those films are really good for their character focus. Hobbit and or? A, uh, no, Lord I'm just talking about the whole Lord of the Rings okay. sort of saga. Mm. The, Lord of the Rings particularly, obviously, because it's the be- it's the stronger of the stronger trilogy by yeah, far. Of but those or have a really good character focus, but and also when the they're not uh, stylized in any way. And also one of the great things to that is just it's so simple. Destroy mm-hmm. the ring, and yeah. that's just mm-hmm. through line, and then yeah. This is this is the thing. Those those and films. Lots of walking. Yeah, those films have orcs, things like that. But everything's very grounded, very proportioned to what you could expect of like a Game of Thrones. This and it's is all very, real. As yeah, well, th- this well majority. This plays with scale in a very playful way, and it's very over the top in a way that I really like. I like stylized stuff like that. I like the way that. But that's a very Blizzard thing, like you said. Yeah. There's almost this animated quality yeah. to it. The same way we've said with games coming out like Overwatch right now. The draw to me for that originally was because it had this over the top the visual animated. style yeah. mm. even though we're seeing this with the real actors there's an animated style and an animated sense of proportion and mm. how these things play out even the nature of movement fights things like everything has personality everything has this le- this over the top nature when it comes to its personality lord of the rings was very grounded game of thrones very grounded that sort of thing this i would say is kind of this far it's it's the opposite end of the scale yep. from lord of the rings yep. in the middle you'd have like that even though it's a completely different genre of Harry Potter kind of thing, yeah. where you have this sort of mixture that, of those two. Kind of fantasy, mm. I suppose, yeah. um, but I actually really enjoyed it. It's actually quite refreshing to see this. But still have, but that's the thing. I, I feel like people are going to see this and compare it to Lord of the Rings. Exactly, say, that's the issue. Yeah. This, is, say, this is ridiculous, but the character focus in this is just as effective. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, and they're alive almost, a lot longer than they'd be in Game of Thrones. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's just, my main issue with folk, a lot folk of have the, just not had the exposure to a range of fantasy things. Yeah. You know, same we've had like horror, sci fi. Yeah, yeah. They just think fantasy. So, oh, Lord of the Rings is the exactly. standard. Exactly. That's my, that's my main issue with a lot of the critical appraisal of this is. Even though I still enjoy Lord of the Rings more than it. What? Nothing. What? It's okay. 
What? But what is the, the, yeah. they they don't appreciate this style of There's fantasy? Range. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that this kind of fantasy exists. Yeah, it's almost that the um, it's the too Star diff- Wars. It's too different from what's been the standard yeah. or what's yeah. been come to expect yeah. of it now. Because Star Wars isn't like Blade Runner, which isn't like Alien, exactly. which isn't like Ex Machina, exactly. You know, but the the um. Is they're all bad. But what's mm. mental when you th- like you think about this is I I find it I thought about this earlier today where I thought oh well all these things have this lore to pull off of but if you look at Lord of the Rings Game of Thrones and then Warcraft Warcraft obviously is the newest out of all those franchises well actually is Game of Thrones you can say but in terms of that is something these people could look at the source material and say oh but this is based on a game. But there's so much more material oh, yeah. behind this property mm-hmm. than Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if you wanted to learn, like, look at the backstories and look at the stories and say, oh, I want there to be a, a, a wealth of material, there is way more in every character. Like, even the smallest characters in, these fil- in this film have so many stories to them. Mm-hmm. That it's mental. When you think about that, mm-hmm. there is so much behind it. What I like about the lore of Warcraft as well, that it blends high fantasy like that mm. kind of fantasy with sci-fi elements as well yeah exactly it's, because uh, there's a lot of time well, traveling yeah. dimensional yeah. stuff but at, the, well. at the end of the day the orcs are aliens they're yeah. coming from another world the Drenai through a portal pretty much just aliens as well yeah, like yeah it's, exactly yeah it's and there's time travel yeah. in the is that warlords of draenor it's in it's in or it's in burning crusade but yeah it's warlords of draenor focuses a it's lot on a it main, it's a main it's a main plot about the, point the yeah. caverns of time and going back because there's like the when Draenor is destroyed because it goes like, back to Draenor yeah. like when it was at its yeah when it when was it, when it was Draenor and not Outland yeah Outworld Outland Outworld one of those Mortal Kombat but that's what I mean there's this there's there's so which one's which <laughs> <laughs> what are you which thinking? one's Mortal Kombat which one's Warcraft that's Outworld which one's uh, Mortal Kombat's Outworld so it's Outland then it's Outland then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nether Realm and Outworld <laughs> mm. but the no, but I, th- I think that it just shows how difficult writing this must have been to a degree. Because yeah. they've changed things, but they've done mm. it, like you said, with respect. And I think that's... A, and it must have been... Inc- for something that I assume has been... From what you've said with the BlizzCon stuff, mm-hmm. it's been well-received because they've taken their own spin on things, but they've remained very faithful. Mm-hmm. Like the new Ghostbusters will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> And um, I sorry, think, I coughed. <laughs> and I think that's objective. Mark cough. <laughs> it's the objective mark. The only like all of Mark's points objective. Uh, and I think that's it, it's it shows that you know Jones has put a lot. Well, not just Jones, but he is obviously the person who helmed this mighty war craft. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this craft of war. This craft of war. Very punny, great. Very punny. Uh, you know. And, and also that was another thing like uh, you, did you notice the wee god view that you get when they're sacking the towns and stuff yeah, yeah. That, that was very Warcraft like, yeah. it's, mm-hmm. it's, it feels like the game soundtrack as well that was uh, done by the guy who does game with Doug, yeah, yeah. yeah Ramon, Ramon Jawadi or whatever his yeah. name is I only what noticed you, it at the very start when you sort of get the do 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 yeah. and I was like alright okay and then I just forgot the rest of it <laughs> I quite like I quite like the soundtrack it recycles mm. some of the original <laughs> stuff from the mm-hmm. first games it's, it's an original soundtrack but mm. I like the way they did yeah. some of that but I, I don't know I, it's the lore stuff that really interests me in this whole thing yeah, story you know, world I, I'm, yeah. obs- I'm obsessed with like looking at the stuff and usually with films and me you said it before I, I uh, get really obsessed with how characters interact or yeah, how the soppy stuff yeah the soppy stuff the overly emotional moments but you know, the um, yeah. but I you know I like looking into reasons why things happen but this is just a case of it's a this isn't about an emotional engagement and also we've this got Moses Orc baby event. as well <laughs> Moses yeah. Orc baby it goes all biblical mm. I know I thought she died a bit yeah you know and then, I thought like, it was quite just, I actually I, quite liked it yeah I didn't know no, no, when she like leaps up and thingies and I was like oh I just stabbed myself with my own thingy sort of kind of oh no, I'm it was dead knife, wasn't it, it? It, it was her knife that she put in the ground yeah and then the he other one came it. through yeah. and picked yeah. it up yeah. and she she didn't have a weapon so she just she yeah. a jugular so I was happy yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> just to save her baby yeah oh, no, slightly, no, no, no but it's uh, just you know the didums moment that we seem mm. to have in a couple of films yeah slightly, oh just go and kill myself for slightly bit. less brutal than than the lore yeah. oh yeah yeah nah. uh, in uh, lore wise Duratan's arms are cut off so he can never hold his baby yeah. again and then he's just left to die the things I thought were really weird were 
the you can hold a baby with a thighs. It's fine. <laughs> the kind it's still of good. It's still the good. kind of like romance that was pl- like, even though both were not like done really in super obvious ways. I thought the romance between uh, Garona, Garona and Lothal's character was much less. I could. I could. It was weird. It was really weird, and I could. And I, at the time, I was like, "This is kind of soppy and odd." Nah. But then the, the the orc marriage, I was like, "This is working really well." <laughs> I was like, yeah. "What's wrong with me?" But they made it work really well. Yeah. Like them ha- them having conversation while they're lying down in bed. And yeah. I was like, This is strangely working. That's fine because the other one was that's, like, "That's the I, first I'm, introduction to yeah, this character." Yeah. The other well. one was kind of weird. The other with one was just of like, gray interaction, like. Oh, I'm so awkward and no. But also, because like, oh, my son's just I don't go to grief pint, and then she just comes over and gives him a kiss, and then it's like, no, it's it's uh, a sexually charged embrace. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sexually charged beer holding. But it's really bizarre because like the, the the orc marriage worked really well, yeah. and I was yeah. like, why am I appreciating the way this orc marriage has yeah. been written? It's it just it wasn't on the nose. It was done really subtly, and they were both too big. And why doesn't the magic CG guy lummoxes? Why doesn't the magic nerd never get shipped? Yeah. Poor guy. He doesn't deserve to be shipped with that poor mustache. <laughs> <laughs> True. One of my, um, actually, one of my other favorite bits, just purely from an action standpoint, is like right at the end, like after the battle's going on, when Lothar like rides in in the griffin and yeah. just mm. charges down into the board, great. like rolls off, cuts and cuts them down. The griffin goes mental. The griffin was great. I love yeah. the Griffin. Mm. I love how there's like two really big fights going on. The one in the tower <laughs> oh, really and the big one fights. and the what and the war going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. And he's just on the sidelines for both. Like he doesn't do the main part of anything. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh, all I care about is avenging my son. I'll let everyone else kind of do the work or die. No, he doesn't even doesn't even. Well, he does care about that, but he doesn't even <laughs> worry about that. He's just trying to get rid. I mean, his body out yeah. yeah he's just kind of latent on the sidelines to a lot of stuff and I'm like you're supposed to be the main him in the prison was pretty good so yeah. alright I'm fine now I'm calm I'm calm <laughs> there we are <laughs> oh the polymorph as well that was superb I turned yeah. into a sheep it turned into a sheep yeah. just the, the little La- does it last like one minute in game uh, yeah I think it's less than that it's like 20 seconds oh. but oh man the polymorph was so good it's just the little things like that that shows that it was you know, made, made with, with love and care. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. just for objective mark. But as you mentioned earlier, as well with the different cultures, like we got, we saw a bit yeah, of the elves, yeah. we saw a bit of the dwarves, yeah. we saw the mage society, but it wasn't en- enough to complicate the film. Mm-hmm. Like the dwarves were in the forge and that sort of, thing, and they were just kind of shown briefly, yeah. and you yeah, didn't the, need to know them. And you see the you see the caged Drenai on Drenor, and yeah, exactly. And I, so we got these two cultures and that's mm. all you really needed and yeah. I thought that worked really well well it shows that there's more to this I mean the the focal point of the first Warcraft games were humans and orcs that's mm-hmm. what the focus of the, these films are but yeah. it shows that there's a lot more to the world yeah of Warcraft <laughs> And then the next film, they'll outlie all the classes when he's like, we need to go on an adventure with my friend, the shaman, my friend, <laughs> blacksmith. I'm a level 15. <laughs> exactly. So are we ready to give our opinion on yeah. Dust Film? Mark, being the most no, objective no, 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 of no, no, all no, no, of us. No, 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 no. Objective is going last for once. It doesn't work like this. Irv, Not like being this. the most controversial Not of like us. this. What do you think? I did the th- oh, explain the, sk- explain, the, uh, explain the system, Irv. Underwhelmed, whelmed, whelmed. Yes. Overwhelmed. A three prong system like a trident. You know, I just said four things, but it's fine. <laughs> I think it did. I'm confused. I wasn't listening. <gasps> underwhelmed if it's it, bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, underwhelmed doesn't necessarily mean bad. It just means. It's not as good. <laughs> well, the whole point of this is to, it's not to say whether a film is good, bad, or great, or whatever. It's how it reacts to you know our expectations our thoughts it's a it's a personal thing because you can't like at the end of the day you give a, a rating to a film it doesn't mean anything it's how yeah. you felt like exactly. saying it's my rating means everything to me which is why we take each of our opinions and, and average we it. average them <laughs> <laughs> thereby diluting our own opinions that only matter to us yeah, exactly it, I like it, it. it means nothing at the end of the day it's just a nice way of yeah so we don't have how, to compromise how we, and then compromise. How we feel <laughs> and why we felt it. Yes. So Irvin. Boom. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to complicate the, the simple system? Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't possibly do that. Um, I think it's weird because it's weird when you get the thingy 
from a Dunk Joe perspective, <laughs> it's not going to stick. I'm just saying this, 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 this because Mark loves it, and he loves when things get acronymed and shortened. And did you? <laughs> did you? <laughs> did you? Oh, DJ! So, yeah, I was trying to avoid yes. that. I could see that coming a mile. There we off. go. So Deej, yeah, Deej. <laughs> um, from from a Dunk Jones perspective, I'm underwhelmed, but as an overall thing compared to where. Firstly, like the reviews, and I was like, oh, "It's not going to be that bad." It's almost in a favor because we've gotten with really low expectations yeah, as a ex- result. But it's something different. I'm still, I'd say, whelmed. You know, it's something different. Uh, f- fine being thrown at something I've, n- you know, no experience of uh, as a hardcore gamer or whatever. Um, and also, I, I really respected the sort of risks it. It's sort of taken and you know where it was a bit more brutal with its characters and yeah. where it could go I sort of really like that setup even though you can see things from from a couple of miles away in God view but yeah I thought it was alright <laughs> um, but yeah I'll be interested to see where it goes if Dunk, uh, Duncan Jones still stays on mm-hmm. uh, yeah I filmed <laughs> I, was like, I was like is he going to say which one it is yeah no, I appreciated Slam Duncan too. He was good. Oh my god, he was good. <laughs> uh, and um, see, he gets a real high five. That's because it's very rare. Love you, us. Mark. <laughs> but um, no, it was. I it it did. It was really. And also check out the GameSpot stuff because the GameSpot write ups on this is really interesting. I definitely yeah. want to take a Especially look. Especially when they said, uh, you know, they had sort of CG issues with things. Where like the things look really good, but also like the colours didn't really work because mm. you'd only notice like certain things in the foreground, middle ground, but then everything else become muddy and you couldn't really mm. notice anything. You know, all sort of faded into one yeah, thing. Yeah, that's different. That's an odd. I never thought about the perspective. Yeah, like, I, I, I thought it did look not, weird yeah. at times. Well, that was know. that was another thing. Just to to jump back, three D improves this film. Oh, it's, really? It's one of those films that's designed around 3D yeah. as opposed to it being a, a post-processing yeah. thing yeah, to make yeah, you like, yeah. oh, look, 3D little, things are coming at you. A little plug and click. Because there's, there's nothing that comes at you. It's yeah. it's all to add depth to it and Perspective. it yeah. alleviates some of that muddiness because the things in the foreground are, are in defined. the foreground. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Might give that a cheeky watch. But I, overall, I, th- I no, I uh, really enjoyed it I watched that pirately on my 3D TV <laughs> <laughs> but I think I will give it a whelmed because as I it has loads of potential there mm. and still I really flaws, like the world building but, yeah. but it still didn't have everything there but it, it, it's it's well up there on the whelmed side <laughs> like mm. it's it is it is a really I would say everyone should see this film just to have an opinion on it because exactly, well, yeah. don't believe how bad it, there's much worse so when, films you when can there see when there was 18% and I was like oh come there on there are worse films that come out yeah. that get much worse films that get higher ratings yeah, than like this. Civil War like Apocalypse it's incredibly it's almost like a fad that it's getting this low yeah. this group of low scores it's almost it's almost like they've all jumped on the same bandwagon for the sake of it and I don't yeah. know why the, the majority also, of major critics yeah because also it would just be a th- like a thing I don't understand this therefore this is bad exactly yeah you know? yeah, yeah. But no, I definitely give it a watch. You don't respect the world. It's definitely it's it's worth a watch. Mm. So just to be just to be difficult, I mean, coming from the same way as as Irv was, as far as a Duncan Jones film goes, coming from Moon and Source Code, Mm -hmm. underwhelmed from a Duncan Jones perspective. perspective. From a Warcraft perspective, as a fan of the lore, overwhelmed, completely overwhelmed. It's managed it. It's a superb video game adaption. Mm -hmm. Everything is done exceedingly well. It's Mm -hmm. not too over the top or too diluted it's it's almost perfect as far as a film adaption goes mm. as a film goes like which is what the over my proper score is well mm. i mean it's not you know it's not it averages the yeah, two it's yeah. not outstanding it like it's got its issues but it does a lot of good service to warcraft mm. so you know and it's a fantastic world building it's just like so in general whelmed does it does it belong in the short bungalow hall of great fi- game to film adaptions i'm tempted to say it's the only good no silent no. hill i would say silent, silent hill is a hill. good adapt the silent. original silent hill yeah, let's original. not talk about the second one yeah the original silent original silent hill good. a good ad- it's a good adaption yeah adaption yeah. it's it it's changes things for us. yeah but there's a lot of but that that's that's not that's not the issue that video game films mm. have that they change things because they all change things and they're Mate, all hit terrible man agent 47 didn't see that one <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah i forgot i forgot about silent hill but yeah 
it's mm. what's broken the mold of yeah, good. Yeah, especially for a long time. That's yeah. 10 years yeah. this yeah. year yeah. since uh, Silent Hill. Yeah, but because because of the, the, the way it, it mm. treats the lore. Um, and it also, definitely, when you've got all that resources put into it mm-hmm. and you know the yeah. creators... There's nods everywhere yeah, to this. Yeah, the directors. And it definitely doesn't deserve the critical response it's received. And mm-hmm. interestingly, since you mentioned GameSpot, there's another thing I wanted to mention. Uh, if you look at game... Mm-hmm. Um, thing game channels, I suppose that review it, um, that have reviewed it. That, you know, they're not you know considered big movie critics as far mm-hmm. as the aggregates go, but they all like it. Yeah. to love it. Like IGN gave them like an eight. Yeah, it's, um, it's yeah, getting the look. Yeah. I'm seeing it get sevens to like na- sevens to nines. Total total film, which is now part of uh, Game Informer, mm-hmm. uh, gave it three stars, which it's yeah, it's better. It's better than average. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Which is it's which is fine. <laughs> yeah, it's whelmed, yeah. It's not yeah. bad. It's not. I mean But just when folk were thinking it was gonna be, you know, Warcraft, Warcraft where you're just fanning about with pals and yeah, the yeah, comedy yeah. and humor and they're like this isn't what six, I six you know, six different people meet up yeah. in a group at the beginning or whatever, yeah. five and then yeah. go off on a And you've journey. got that, you've got Make Love, not Warcraft, and it says as well. You can have yeah. a plethora of things. Yeah. And so many critics just took it so wrong. And there's just one one thing I one one little quote here that I wanted to, to read, leave. which just made me laugh when I read it. Coming from I'm not gonna say where the reviews come from, but it's a, it was a one star review. Uh, the prospect of a predominantly white European realm being invaded by foreign, primitive, darker-skinned hordes that are actually called the Horde might set alarm bells ringing in our current climate of immigration anxiety. Is this a veiled UKIP broadcast or a pro-Trump one? What? Yeah, no. Is they're, they're definitely... As waiting, far as criticism goes. They're definitely going way <laughs> too into it. It's like, I can't believe they would make a film based on that at this time on a property made... <laughs> Build the 20 wall. Years, years ago. <laughs> Build the wall. Build the wall. Just of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. That's... Leaving ridiculous. it on a, on a potentially politically point. <laughs> politically charged point. Well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 